myself, and especially my wife, and the health issues that uh, she's been facing, and uh, she's hanging in there. She's a she's a real trooper, and uh, she wish she could be here and says hi to everybody. But uh, continue to pray for us if you would. And I'll know that God has a sense of humor, and. Uh, all the time, our family and everybody thought, due to my background, which we really don't need to get into much, but uh, to say the least, it wasn't the best until I was 36 years old and got saved. And the way I abused my body and myself, had more of this body out, had the heart issues and first heart attack at 36 and everything. And we all thought that uh, Sister Hood would be taking care of me and, and everything. And, tables are switched. <laughs> and I was telling somebody, uh, uh, it, it is, it is it's, you know, it's, it's almost funny. I mean, it really is. I mean, I got a daughter that comes over and helps with some, and she's got three kids, a little with a handful. And uh, daughter-in-law, she could come to, but she's got three kids too, and they live a little ways away. My sister-in-law comes over and helps, but her mom's, their mom's, uh, 92 years old or 91 will be 92 and she's failing and needs somebody to sit there and watch her every all 24 hours a day so she's doing that but they're trying to help and I'm the fellow that uh, I'm the old school I'm, I'm, I'm just old school I, I had uh, three we had three kids I never changed no I never changed one diaper I didn't help at all I didn't do I didn't do nothing I went and made the money sometimes when I get into all that, but I didn't do none of that stuff. I was not one of these modern day men. I did not go to the, uh, when I went to the place we dropped her off to have the baby, and I went out in the waiting room, man, and went and got some White Castles and other things and come back and sat with the rest of the man, passed out cigars when it was over with, amen, and didn't need to see nothing or know nothing, amen. And uh, nowadays, I think probably video and verse and everything else, man, craziest thing I've heard of in my life, but... Uh, I'm just old school. And I didn't know how we got a dishwasher in the house. And I never knew how to turn the dishwasher on. I didn't know where the soap went in the dishwasher. I didn't know where the soap was for the dishwasher. I know nothing about no dishwasher. Yeah. Down in the basement, there's strange things down there. There's two white things down there. I think one of them called a washer and a dryer. Last time I tried, I remember one time, I did try and wash clothes. I was in the Army at Aberdeen Proving Grounds in Maryland. And I went in the laundromat there. And I remember the, the, the bunch of little women in there and stuff doing their clothes. And, and, I, and I was a 17-year-old recruit in the Army. And I dumped all them clothes in there. And I took that suds and dumped about a half a box of suds in that thing. And turned it all on and everything. I thought, well, man, that's done with. And went over there and sat down. Next thing I know, everybody's laughing and looking over my washer. And that's Suds has raised up to the ceiling in this place. I said, man, I guess I ain't cut out to do that. But, you put about that much of that stuff in that there, then you take that little ball and put the, the downy stuff in there and throw it in there, man, you know, and, and just turn them buttons on, put it on hot coal, whatever you want, that made it. She said, you don't wash your white shirts with everything else. Why not? They're white and everything else in there is white. But not my wife. she got to wash them different. You know, don't put the towels in with them. Why not? They're... So, uh, needless to say, things have changed around the hood. Pray for sisterhood. <laughs> uh, I come in here tonight and come up here. We're going to be a blessing trying to be a help. I come in here tonight and have been praying during the day and even before we got up here. Lost my preaching Bible Sunday and uh, we won't get into all that but I lost it. And uh, so uh, trying to figure out the mind of God what God had me to preach. And I carried four messages in my Bible when I got in here. Not, not you other preachers probably never do this but I'm just weird. And Got in there and sat down. Two of them I took out um, right away. And then I had two left. So now I'm, then you know how it is. You kind of size up the crack. 
I said, Lord, I know this is one the one you put on my heart, but it's true. I don't think it don't look like it's going to fit. <laughs> I said, I think I like this one over here better. He said, put it away. So here we are. <laughs> Turn your Bibles to uh, Luke chapter number 15. I preached some of this Sunday at the church out of a borrowed Bible. I stood up in the pulpit Sunday morning. I said, does anybody have a nice Bible with some decent size print that I can use to preach with? And uh, I said, you didn't have no notes or nothing? No, I, 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 well, my notes ain't really... Well, they're... Uh, I, I don't know. It, they're a bunch of scribbling up here. Well, yeah, I, the, sometimes. I'm about like you, Brother Nagowski. You know, you know and... Uh, so anyhow, uh, back to this. I, 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 I borrowed the Bible and preached, but so I'm going to preach a message here in a minute. And I don't know if it's just for one person in here or who it's for or whatever, but we're going to read, starting in verse number 12, and you follow along with me. It says in the, and, you know, in, the, in uh, Luke 15 is, is, the, is a parable. And I don't, I don't think it's parables. I think it says in, in verse number two, and in, in, uh, in, uh, in verse number three, and he spake this parable. So I think it's a parable. It's a parable of lost, uh, of course, in the first uh, part of the chapter there, in verses three through about uh, seven, it's the parable of lost sheep. Then uh, we have it, uh, then, uh, and then it talks about the in eight through uh, about eleven, the lost coin, and now the. Uh, the uh, we have here the lost son we're going to talk about. Right. And I noticed one thing here, and I, I'm not, you know, I wish I can't, I can't do all this stuff like all these other men can, and I'm not as smart as they are, and I can't just line things out, but I noticed one thing, I noticed that there was uh, these three things that was lost, they were all found. Yeah. Yeah. And I also noticed there was rejoicing mentioned in all three of those places too. We ought to rejoice when somebody's found and somebody yeah. gets right. We don't do that half the time. Yeah. Yeah. My goodness, somebody comes back in our church, man, they're scared to come back here and get right with God because everybody's looking down their nose at them and, and, and say, well, where have you been? And all that. So say, hey, man, glad to see you back. Yeah. And do a little rejoicing. Yeah. Uh, three, uh, out of the three things that were found, two of them were found by other people and other than the sheep and the coin. But really, truthfully, the, the son found his own way back. So uh, it says there in verse number 12, it says, For the younger, uh, or verse number 11, and he, said unto a, and he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his lip. Now, I had seen that the other day when I was reading that. Now, maybe I'm not getting it right, but it sounds like he gave both them boys uh, part of it. He divided to them. Yeah. So I guess the, the boy that stayed home, I mean, he got some too, man. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it says not many days, not many days, uh, uh, not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had uh, spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to, to be in want. Probably something he didn't know a whole lot about, if you know what I'm talking about when he's at the father's house. And uh, verse 15 says, And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent uh, him, uh, he sent him into the fields to feed the swine. And he would fain have uh, filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave uh, unto him. And when he had come to himself, but that's where you got to get to that point, that you come to yourself where you're going to get any help. Right. Hey, there's people tried to help me all my life where I got saved. I was 36 years old when I got saved. Hey, the court system tried to help me the best they could. My parents tried to help me the best they could. I mean, people tried to counsel me and give me some good advice the best they could. A probation officer gave me some advice, told me to go in the Army to keep in penitentiary and tried to help me and tried to steer me in the right direction, but I just refused help. I had to come to myself. 
It says he came to himself and said, How many, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and, and, uh, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great uh, way off, his father saw him because his father had been looking for him. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And uh, had compassion. There's something we know very little about anymore is compassion. And ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against uh, heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe. I like that best stuff. Yeah, and uh, put it on him. Matter of fact, I, 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 like, I like nice cars and I, I like a nice suit and everything. Problem is, I got a, I got a Cadillac a taste and a Volkswagen uh, billfold. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, put, it, put it on him. And he put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, uh, he was lost and is found, and they begin to be merry. Brother Mark, pray for us. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord God, for saving us. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here. God, bless the preacher now, fill him with the Spirit of God. Lord, speak to our <coughs> We could entitle it uh, Headed for a Far Country. We could entitle it uh, What the Father Saw, or better yet, Better Stay with the Father. So you can entitle it any way you want. And uh, that prodigal, is, uh, I looked it up, it is given to uh, extravagant expenditures or waste. And uh, I read that definition and stuff, and I got to thinking about that. You could be a prodigal and uh, stay right there with the Father. Amen. Yeah. Right. You know, we got a lot of people sitting right here in this church that they haven't left out to the far country yet right. physically. Yeah. And by the way, you can uh, end up in that far country at any age. I looked around, and I go, usually you preach something like this to the younger crowd. But it doesn't make no difference. You can get and end up in that far country, hey, and, uh, and, and it doesn't matter what your age is. But I also noticed that, and, 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 uh, that uh, the father, and we, as we read down through there, I didn't read anywhere in there anyhow. I, I did not say, see, anywhere where the father tried to get that son to stop him from leaving. You think that father didn't know where he was headed? You didn't think he knew the hardships, the hard times and the, that he was headed for? Right. You think God doesn't know when you decide to go out in that far country and get away from, from Him and get out of church where you're headed for? He can stop you. The Father might have been able to try and talk Him out of it or do something to stop Him, but He didn't even make an attempt. He said, go ahead. Help yourself. Sometimes the parents and the people just need to get out of God's way yeah. and allow them to go on and do what they're going to do. Yeah. Even when you know where they're headed and what it's going to cost them. And let them learn some hard lessons like some of us had to learn. Lessons that you don't forget. He just let it go even knowing what was going to happen. Then, but I do see some things that the, that the father saw. First of all, there in verse number 12 where it says that the younger uh, said, uh, give me. He saw, first of all, there he uh, began to see a change in that boy. It sounded like he might have uh, all of a sudden been demanded for his father. Give me this stuff. Give me what I got coming. And we live in a world like that. 
We live in a world that demands things of our government, demands things of you and the church, and thinks God and the world owes them something. God doesn't know you nothing. I don't know you nothing. The church don't know you nothing. That's why we got a bunch of lazy people nowadays, young and old, that won't get out and work because they think the same thing. Give me, give me, give me. And the government says, sure. And they'll keep on giving until we're busted and they ain't got nothing else to get. And we're some third-rate, third-world country like they're trying to get us to be. But he uh, began to change. He began to change and he began to demand it. And I'm telling you what. When you begin, when you begin to do that, you know where you're headed? You're headed for the far country. That's exactly where you're headed. You're headed out that door. You're headed out of the church. You're headed out of the Father's house. You want to get away from all authority, as somebody talked about the other night or so in here, but you're, you're headed in the wrong direction. That's right. Then we see there also that uh, verse number 13 says there, that, uh, he says, and not many days uh, after the younger son gathered all together, he took, you know why it was distant? It wasn't many days for him to gather, after he gathered all things, everything together, to take that journey into a far country. Because he had already purposed in his heart, man, a long time before he demanded to give me, and he got what he was coming. He had already, already knew he was leaving, and it didn't take him long once he got it to get out of there. There's some baby sitting right here in this service tonight. You've already decided you've had enough of this church business. You've had enough of the Father's house. You've had enough. You're ready to walk out that door right now. You may be sitting in here physically, young or old. Married or single. But you ain't with us. I, I see it all the time. These, these men that travel around a lot more than I do see it all the time. Amen. It began to, we see there in verse number 13, that he was beginning to make bad decisions. And the biggest, the baddest decision he made is it says that he took his journey into a far country. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you, I'm leaving. I'm out of here. I'm, nobody's telling me nothing anymore. Hey, I'll tell you what, that's a no way to live your life. I lived a big part of my life like that. Yes. Ain't nobody told me nothing. I did everything I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. I didn't obey no rules from nobody's rules. And I was missing. Amen. Amen. And he left. He made the decision. He left his father's house. And, uh, and and really and truthfully, maybe getting a little bit ahead of myself, but we'll find out that later that, that, that when he realized, he, when he came to himself, he realized that he left where he, he left every everything he needed was in the Father's house where he left. But he made bad decisions. He, he got his own way. He got his stuff. He got exactly he got exactly what he wanted, didn't he? He asked his father to give him his portion. Yeah. And did he give it to him? Yeah. Yeah. He got exactly what he wanted. Did he stay? Yeah. Some of y'all with your children, you better learn it. You go ahead and give them everything they want. You go ahead and give them everything that they ask for. And now you, you think that's some guarantee that they're going to do right and stay? You, that's no guarantee. Yeah. Matter of fact, you, you ain't got no guarantee. Don't go and run over there to Proverbs 22, 6 with me and say that's a guarantee. You're wrong. It isn't. Right. I don't know. You theologians and all you smart guys look at me and shake your heads or whatever. I don't care. Train up a child in the way he should. Yeah. It didn't say he would. Right. It said train up the way he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from it. From what? From the training. Man, I've had him in the rescue mission, man, that was trained up right, ended up out there in that far country, on them streets, but they could not get away from that book that was put in Hey, you better understand this. When them kids get old enough, they're going to do what they want to do. 
You can raise five of them in a family all the same way and everything, and one or two of them says, hey, see, I'm out of here. I'm going to far country. <coughs> then you'll beat yourself up and blame yourself. You won't be no good for nobody. And you preachers will get out all the minute. We're a bunch of nuts. Well, you know, one of the qualifications, I, I, I know all that stuff, man. I can read like the rest of us. They ain't a preacher in this room that, that, that lines up to all of them all the time. Not one of them. I've been divorced and everything. And I, uh, 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 but are you given, not just being hospital, but given to hospitality? None of them. You know what that trying to tell you? When you get a preacher and you choose a bishop, man, you better be looking for a pretty good guy, amen. But you ain't going to find one that lives up to all them, I'll guarantee you that. You can forget it. That wasn't in there, but we just stuck that in for extra. Why? It probably just makes some of you mad. Amen. I'm trying. So he made bad decisions. Then we see down, down there in verse number 13 also. In verse number 13 also it says there and uh, he wasted, he went into the far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Oh, he made bad decisions. One of them bad decisions was to be starting to live a different lifestyle than he did at the Father's house. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, you can get out of church, man. Throw all your standards out the window and everything else and live like the devil and do what you want to do. Hey, but I'm telling you what, hey, you're not going to be happy. I'll guarantee you that. Amen. You know, the most miserable person in the world is the one that leaves the Father's house, is the one that goes out into the far country, then saved and born again, and leave all that and go out there in that far country and think you're going to fit and think you're going to be. It's going to be. As to some of you, it's like it used to be. It ain't going to be. Bad decision. Different, different life, different lifestyle. Riotous living. Man, we got we got we got a nation, man. That's all it is. I told my church the other day, hey, this I'm 69 years old. This is not the world that I grew up in. Hey, I grew up in the inner city, man. I pastor a church in the inner city. I'm a city boy through and through. But it is not the same. It is not the same world that I used to live in and grow up in. And I ain't never seen a bunch of irresponsible fathers, especially men. They say they're men. They got a man's age and even look like a man. And they act like some idiot, some teenage boy. That don't want no responsibility. Riotous living, man. Let's just party it up. Let's just have a good time, man. Life ain't always a good time. I don't like my job. Shut up and work it. Thank God for it. Guys in the mission house, man. Yeah. We get, we get some lazy ones come through there. Some of them, we did get a job. But usually, the, some of them get the job down to uh, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, steel plant down there. Well, uh, Columbus uh, Casting, I forget, Columbus Dying Casting or something like that. And it is, man, they, they work. But the more, a guy in our, in our church has a construction company, a uh, uh, a um, concrete company. He's worked more than I can count. They don't last long in either one of them places. You know why they come in and complain to me? I said, what's wrong? I said, I'm wore out and I'm tired. I mean, you know, that place down there. I said, it's work. It's labor. You're supposed to be tired, dummy. It keep you out of trouble. Make you want to go home at night and go to bed. It's work. That's a four-letter word in the inner city, man. W O R K. Yeah, yes, four letters. Yeah, you know, I'm making sure. But the riots, let me. All people, they ain't serious about nothing. They just want to party it up all the time. 
And you notice when most of their partying goes on out in the far country, don't you? On Sunday, of course. The big races and all the big ball games and the Super Bowls and all the other stuff. And of course you want the church tries to do this ain't in there. This is extra. You know what the church tries to do? They try to compete with them. And man, you can't compete with the world. We had, we just had, one of them had the, the, the big trucks, I want the monster trucks. Yeah, that's it. And have a step ladder to get up in and all that stuff. They had to the church run over cars and stuff and everything. I thought, my goodness gracious. Where does it end at? But that's what happens. If you're going to promote a man and you're going to just have to have something bigger every week and every month, man, to keep them coming. Because the guy down the street, he's going to out promote you. And the church is in competition with the world, man. Well, whatever happened with just getting, bringing people to church and taking the Word of God and just preaching the devil out of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I uh, had a different lifestyle there. The Father seen him get a change and begin to live a different lifestyle. That riotous living. And the next thing you know, you know where that led to. He joined right up with them then. Man, he joined right up with the world then. And where did that get him? That got him in the hog pit. Yeah. Yeah. Eating with the swine. Man, the world is so good to you, ain't it? Go on out there in that far country. Go on out there. They'll treat you real good. Feed you real good. I, I, I don't know much about, I told my church when I preached along these lines the other day, I don't know nothing about farming. I don't know nothing about hog farms. Whatever they call them, I get hog farm. I don't know. But I know one thing. I've been on, I've put some roofs on some farmhouses and some barns in my time when I was roofing and siding. And I know one thing. When it was them guys that had them hogs, I knew it right away when we got near that place because it stunk. Amen. Yeah. Never did like that hog much after that. And I see what he wallowed around in and all that. As bad as he stunk, man. What a place to be. Yeah. <clears throat> That's about what that world will do for you, I guarantee you that. And then and then and look there. And it says there and after he had uh, in verse last part of verse sixteen it says, No man no man gave unto him. Amen. That's a good place for him to be. Well, yes, sir. If you get out there and you leave the father's house and you get out and Get away from the church and away from God and get out there in a far country. I hope and pray nobody helps you. Yeah. Huh. Right. Say, wait a minute now. you got a rescue mission. I sure do. Man had a rescue mission for 27 years. And there is a fine line right there. When to help and when to say, sorry. Yeah. You know, God got some of them out there in the hog pen of life and he got them right where he wants them. If the prodigal would have had a, a, a somebody a rescue mission, he might not have went back to the father. <coughs> Come into our mission, we'll feed you and give you everything. But then again, there's some of them old boys that's been out there long enough and been in that hog pen long enough and stink bad enough. God knows we've had them come through. <laughs> yeah, wait, said that bothered you not one bit? Thank God my nose has been broke seven times, amen. And it, I can't smell nothing, you know. But so, you know, they come in there, I'm about, they had a bath for a month or two, man, and, you know, uh, whatever, urinated and everything else all over. You know, it, it, it don't bother me. And then my wife and my daughter would say, they need to take a shot. I ain't bad, so I say, okay. I'll pick you up for church, or when you come in the next time, take a shot. Amen. But I'll tell you what, you get out there in that hog pen, you'll stink and everybody will know it, buddy. And, I, and if it would have been a rescue mission there, he might not have come back. So there's a fine line on when to help and when not. Because sometimes that one's been out there and he's in there, man, he don't smell good, he don't look good. And it looks like there's no hope for him. 
But God said, this is it's time. It's time again. He said, go ahead and help us with you. Amen. He said, you always hit that right. Are you crazy? Do I always hit it right? Are you nuts or something, man? No, I don't always get it right. He said, what do you do? I err on the side of grace. Yeah. Amen. 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 I err on the side of grace. I'll give you a chance, man. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm the underdog preacher. I'm for the underdog. I'm going to help you. I'm a, I, I prayed. Why, 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 why wouldn't I? Brother Charlie, why wouldn't I? I prayed when we started this thing. I said, God, would you send me that bunch that nobody else wants? God said, I believe it will. Yeah. Lord, can I, you know, I'm prayer I prayed about 27 years ago. Can we renegotiate that maybe? <laughs> I thought about that a few times. But there's that fine line. But you get out there, and I don't care if you're young or old or married or single or whatever it is, because we get all kinds coming through the mission down there. I pray until you are ready that nobody helps you. Yeah, and you know what? You just have to be miserable. Yeah. And the more miserable, the better. Yeah. Some of y'all praying for your loved ones wrong. Oh, God, help them to be merciful. Now, God put it on making the most miserable person in the face of the earth till they get right with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother-in-law used to make laugh at me and stuff when I got called to preach. Pray for me, Jimmy. Pray for me. Pray for me. I said, I'm praying for you, Jack. Pray for me, Jimmy. Pray for me. Be about half drunk. I said, I'm praying for you. And I'm praying that God make you the most miserable person on the face of the earth till you get right with God. He said, quit praying for me. It's working. Then we see he joined himself up with that. But then he, he, he lost it all. Yeah. Man, thank God. Thank God that he lost it. He, he, he lost it all there in, in verse number 14. And he went and joined himself into the citizens of that country. And they sent him into the field to feed the swine and so forth and so on. 17. <laughs> and and uh, he came to himself. You know, after he, after he had lost it all, he finally came to himself. And by the way, it probably didn't take him very long to lose it all, did it? Anybody ever been out in that far country? It, it ain't cheap out there. That riotous living don't come cheap, I guarantee you that right now. So it probably didn't take him long to lose it, but he lost it all. And, and verse number 17 there, I think it's verse number 17, yeah, it says that he came to himself. Well, that's, what's, that's, that's a good place. He lost it all so he could come to himself. He came to himself and he thought, you know what? First of all, he probably said, when he came to himself, he said, uh, what a, he seen what a fool he really was. How foolish he really was. To leave the father's house that had the food and everything else. To go out in that far country. Because of the lure of those bright lights and the lies and the temptations of the devil deception of the devil trying to get you to think you're missing something you ain't. Amen. I've given my testimony all over this country in jails, penitentiaries, churches, youth groups, and everywhere else. And the place that I'm the most careful is when I give it to the youth groups. Right. I don't say a whole lot about it anymore. You know why I'm so careful when you do it? Because you, if you ain't careful, you glorify that sin, and them kids think they're missing something. If you ain't, uh, you kid, you young and here, you listen to me, man. You ain't missed a thing out there. But misery, pain, agony, and heartache, bad time. So when he came to himself, he seen what a fool he was, and he he see that. Uh, uh, when he had turned his back on the, uh, oh well, let's go to the next one. That he didn't, that he didn't have uh, to live like he was living when he came to himself. He finally said, "I don't have to live like this." When he came to himself, he realized what he had to do to get out of the mess he was in. This is very simple. What? Go back to the father's house. And thank God we see then, we see finally, we see true repentance, 19 and 20, where he arose, it says there, uh, and, uh, and, he, and he went back to the fall. <coughs> you know, I tell people, and I'll say, it, I'll say it right here. 
the hardest thing and the easiest thing is, is, one, is one and the same. Getting right with God is really the easiest thing in the world, to be quite honest with you. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, cleanse us of all unrighteousness, mean business with that, that's pretty simple. But yet it's so hard. And coming back to church, that's pretty, all you got to do is walk in that door. Amen. Church, I've been wrong. Would you forgive me? Sure, we will. Come on. Yeah. Oh, really? There will always be something that I don't really believe in mean business. So, well, we don't pay no attention to that crowd. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? They don't know nothing in the house. They think they don't know if you meant business or not because you didn't cry the way they think you did or something. You didn't look right or you didn't say it exactly right. Glory on all that. Bible doesn't say nothing. Baby. If they come and ask for forgiveness, we forgive them. We'll take it back in and give them another chance. And another one. That's easy. It don't sound easy, but it is so hard. Isn't it? isn't it so hard for people to come to God and confess that sin and then come back and ask the church to forgive them and get things right or go to a family member or go to somebody and ask for forgiveness? Say they're sorry for the sin against them. They're sorry for for the way they acted it was, it was the way they've been doing it really is it's simple but it's man it is the hardest you know what I suggest today you listen to this old man up here and I'm going to tell you the truth if you're even considering leaving the father's house and going out in that far country you better stop. You better just stop right where you're at. You better reconsider. If you're not, if you're not as close to God now as you used to be, you better get back to as close to Him as you can be. And in these last days, you're going to need to be closer. I don't care if you're young or old in here. In these last days, with the temptation and man and, the, and all the stuff that's going on in this crazy, mixed-up world that we're in. You're going to need to be have the best relationship and be as close to God now, closer to God now than you've ever been. So don't go to that far country. I'll promise you that you'll regret it if you do. We deal with men every day and women. I watch them girls. I look at the girls in here and the young girls. We've got our young girls from the church forum up here uh, going to sing tomorrow. And uh, what a blessing they are to us, the grace of girls. We watch girls just as young as some of them start out on them streets down there in our city. Pretty little girls, clean looking little girls, innocent looking little girls for about six months. After about six months out there, they look so dirty. They look so beat up and beat down. I'll tell you that far country is no place for you. Young or old, don't go. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come preach tonight. Thank you for this church, Lord, this meeting. I pray, Father, that you take this warning. I pray, God, that somebody in here would take heed to it. Or maybe somebody has already started for that far country. I pray, God, that you would stop them even tonight. Or they'd turn back. They would go back to where they need to be and get things right. Well, thank you. Lord, I pray if there's anybody in here that's lost, God, that's never truly been saved, I pray this night. Or be a good night to come. Get on their knees and ask you to forgive them and save them. God, I pray that you deal with their heart about their lost condition. We'll thank you and praise you. Bless the remainder of this service. Let's invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.